So for this coloring, I chose uh, a mulberry, like pinkish color, um, blues, purples, black, and a uh, white pencil, which um, I use for the moonbeam, and then a white gel pen. I use the Uniball Signo white gel pen. This is what is going to make all of the pretty stars in the sky. And this is the image I used. It is one of my free coloring pages, and I put the link there of where you can get it. Um, this is kind of meant to be a sun, but I am going to color it into kind of like a moon beam. So it's going to be a night sky instead of a, a sunshiny sky. So I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is like a pinky. It's called Mulberry, and it's PC99, if you're following along. I'm sorry, these are Prismacolor pencils that I'm using, and I'm just using the side of my pencil as I color instead of coloring straight uh, with the tip directly onto the paper. It gives it a lighter touch, um, and it covers more area as you're coloring. It doesn't hurt your hand as much either. And um, I'm just using a light pressure and just kind of going in a random design, like a little bit of curvy lines, no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just filling in some of the white space. Um, and there's going to be a lot of blending of colors in this. So I'm just starting with the lighter color first. So, um, you know, just to be sure I get some light in there before I go all dark with, with the blues and the purples. Now this next one is violet. It's PC932. And I am just a little bit overlapping the previous color I just put down, the pink mulberry, and pulling it out into the white. So it's kind of giving it a little bit of a blend. And again, there's no right or wrong way to do this because this is kind of going to look a little bit like a galaxy or a night sky, like the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis when we're finished. And there's no right or wrong design in those. So that's what's fun about this. You just kind of go with it and, um, you know, you just put colors down wherever you like. And this next darker color is PC933 which is violet blue. So same as before, you're coloring into the previous color that we just put down and pulling it a little bit into the white. And just kind of look around and, you know, see what areas need to be filled in. Now I'm taking my darkest blue, which is indigo blue, PC901, and filling in the rest of the white spaces. Again, going a little bit into the previous color and blending that a little bit so there's some overlap, and then just filling in the rest of the white. And then taking my black, I just um, start around the edges of the paper and pull that in a little bit towards the center, going over what you just colored, just very, very lightly. Just going all the way around the border, a little bit behind the tree, and the limbs. And now you're going to start working backwards from your darkest color down to your lightest color. So our darkest color after the black was the indigo blue. So this is the PC901. And you're going to color straight over the black and back into the indigo. 
And this is where our, all of the layering and blending starts to happen. And your page is gonna start to get a little darker, which is what we're going for because we're going for a nighttime sky. And I wanna mention that this is just regular copy paper, printer paper. Um, and when I use colored pencils, I prefer this type of paper over cardstock because it has a nice tooth to it. And that is good paper for when you're blending your Prismacolor pencils. So now we're into our next lightest color, which is PC 933, the violet blue. And following the same steps as before, this may seem pretty repetitive, but it's building up all of your layers. And then your page won't be as, your coloring won't be as streaky. So, um, you know, when you print this out, you can use cardstock. Um, but like I said, I just use regular old copy paper and it, everything comes out just as nice as it would on cardstock. And as, as far as colored pencils, I am using the Prismacolor pencils. So um, you can do this with any type of colored pencil. And you don't even have to use these colors. You can use different colors. Uh, when I lived in Alaska, the uh, Aurora Borealis were always like a green and blue. So you can do this with greens and blues. Um, you can add more pinks or purples. You can do yellows and oranges. You know, you don't have to stick with just this type of color palette. And I do have um, a variety of galaxy looking color palettes available for free that you can use to go by. So now I'm going to take the white and you can see I use this quite a bit. My white is kind of stubby. And um, you wanna go for that cloudy look. So um, coloring over what you've just done is going to not only blend these colors together, but it's gonna give it that cloudy look that we're going for. And this is just one way of blending. You can use different types. You can use a colorless blender. You can blend with a lighter pencil that's not white, like you can use a lighter pink or a light blue, um, but I like the white. So that's what I go for. And I'm starting in the lighter areas first and then pulling that out into the darker areas because if you start in the darker areas, it's going to get onto your pencil and spread and your page, your colors will get a little bit muddied up. So I like to start in the light areas and then clean off my pencil by just wiping it onto another paper, just coloring off the color onto another paper and then, you know, going into the other areas. Another thing you might want to pay attention to is the direction of your coloring. So if you're coloring up and down, your lines are going to look like they're going up and down and coloring side to side is going to give it movement looking like the sky is going side to side. Normally this would probably make a difference, but um, afterwards when we're done putting all of our colors down with the coloring pencils, we're gonna go in with some odorless mineral spirits and blend it all together. So then you won't see those lines as much. But if you don't have odorless mineral spirits and are leaving it like this, then you probably wanna pay attention to the direction that you're coloring. I also just want to mention that this was originally a live coloring tutorial where uh, people got to interact with me and, and talk and ask questions along the way. Um, this is the edited version that I do for the public. The live tutorials are only available over in my Facebook group called Coloring with Sass, and that group is available to my Patreon subscribers. So I'll put a link to my Patreon for everybody to check out if you want to be involved with the live videos. And after you've colored everything in with the white, I'm going in again with my black. And just like we did earlier with the uh, pink color, just adding in some random 
lines and curves and blobs. And now the paper should be getting pretty waxy and um, because your layers are so built up and everything's uh, blended in together and it's pushing down the tooth of the paper. So there's going to be a lot of wax buildup if you're using wax-based pencils like Prismacolors. And again, there's no right or wrong way to add these lines in or shapes. Um, it's just random, just going straight over what you've already colored. They're almost like branches, you know, that are coming out behind their tree. And this was the first time I've done a sky like this with colored pencils. So I'm sure with some practice, I could get a little bit better at it. Um, I have done it before with markers, and I do have to say that I prefer markers over color pencils. They're much more forgiving on your hands as you're coloring because I had to keep taking breaks from this because it was really starting to cramp my hand um, doing all of this coloring. But you're just going in and adding some lines here and there. It's almost like the shape of a tiger. Or not the shape of a tiger, but the stripes of a tiger. You can make them thicker if you like. Um, it, if you make your uh, shapes a little bit thicker, it's um, just going to put more black into your sky and that's fine too. So now is the um, Odorless Mineral Spirits, also known as Gamsol. And all I'm doing is dipping my blending stump into the Gamsol and then um, just coloring it directly onto the paper and going over all of the ink and blending it together. And that's gonna get rid of all the white spots that are showing through from the, from the paper and blend the color seamlessly so there's not any streaks or lines. And if you don't have any odorless mineral spirits, some people have used Vaseline, some people have used baby oil, coconut oil. There's lots of different um, agents that you can use chemically to um, get some blending done on your coloring. I prefer the Gamsol, but if you do use it, you want to make sure it's in a well-ventilated area because the fumes can be toxic. So I always close my little jar up every time I dip my pencil and I close it right after. So you can kind of see, I'm just uh, going to do this side with the stars right now and leave the other side for later. And I want to show you how I colored the moonbeam is just going over the lines that were drawn in on the picture with a white pencil. And you can't really see it now, but when it's all finished and complete, you'll be able to see the glow of the moonbeams. So I'll do a, a circle around the moonbeam to give it a little bit of a glow with the white after I color in the moon. But right now I'm just adding in these lines so I can do the stars on this side and show you guys how to do the starry sky. So with your white gel pen, I'm just going to make a little circle dot. And you can see here there's different sizes. So I have a big one, little ones, medium-sized one. You can do a starburst, um, little specks, smudged ones, spiral ones. 
So it's just, um, this will be a medium one. Whoops. Sometimes you have to prime your gel pen by coloring on something first. There you go. So there's like a medium star. I'm sorry, the angle of the camera, you can't see this too well. And then just, again, being completely random, just color in some more little random circles. You can do single ones, you can do groups of three, groups of two. You can make a little constellation. And then to do a little star burst, I like to color a little circle and then flick up, flick down, and then flick to each side. So flick left and flick right. And usually when I do my little star bursts, I like to do two side by side, like a big one and a smaller one next to it. And then just do little dots around it. If you smudge it with your finger, it gives them a little, a, a little bit of, um, not a transparency, but a blurred look. It gives it a little bit of a blurred look. So the blurred stars to me look like they're further back and the whiter stars look like they're closer up. So that kind of gives a hint of, you know, um, a three dimensional look to it. And I'm just tapping in little uh, bursts of stars, clusters of stars, I should say. And here you can see I've done little swirls. You can do something like that on your page, or you can just have a completely random sky. Sometimes I like to prime it on my finger because the warmth from your finger gets the ink flowing in the pen nicely. And smudge. A couple here and there. So I did that side and then I'll finish this side and post the final. Thanks for watching.